Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ahli, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad al Nabi wa Rasulullah. With Allah's, we seek refuge in Allah from rejecting enemy shaitan. With Allah's name, the most merciful benefactor, the most merciful redeemer. All praise is due to Allah alone. I bear witness there is no deity except Allah. He has no partners, no associate, and he's sole proprietor, owner, creator of all that we see, all that we're in. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger to mankind, bringing us the good news, bringing us the revelation that was revealed to, unto him for mankind, the Quran. So we're very grateful and thankful to Almighty Allah that, that he thinks so much of us, his creation, his Khalifa, that he's not left anything by chance. Nothing is by chance. Everything he has proclaimed, he has perfected, and he is the deliverer, the maker, the owner. Everything we see is going on. It is Allah, and we thank him for that. Today we're looking at an um, issue in the Quran uh, that brings us a little up to date on where we are and what we should be doing today, what's going on in the world. There are many things that's happening in the world, but it's not exclusive to this day and time. That sometimes it's, I guess, it's a little confusing because we think what's happening in our day and time is so alarming and so great that it seems like the worst time uh, things like this have happened. Uh, uh, people getting run over, people getting killed, and things of that nature. Uh, it, it's not. It's not. It's not that grieve in terms of all times. Kadilaka you bani bayina allahu lakum ayati la alakum tak kilina tak kiluna understanding. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 2, 42, that thus Allah makes clear his signs, his signs to you, lafum, to you. That's plural for every, all of us. Uh, in order that we may have understanding. And it's very important that we seek understanding, we strive for understanding, because understanding is the key. Without understanding, we, are, we can be led in different directions. With understanding, we can follow everything that Allah has for us to follow, we can follow it without problem. But without understanding, we're simply moving on impulse, or we're moving on um, what someone has told us. Uh, we're going on some, uh, someone else's uh, point. And I've heard many people say, well, we believe it because that brother told me. Now, that's not the way it works. Allah didn't create the Quran or have Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just for one individual, or two individuals, or three individuals. It's for the whole of mankind, the whole of mankind, to come into this understanding. Not one, uh, one um, uh, imam or sheikh, and then he tells the people how, what he understands. That's not the purpose here. Allah says that he's created this. He, he created it. He, said he's, he did it. Thus do Allah make clear his signs. Ayatu. Ayati. His signs in order, in order that 
you, me, meaning uh, all of us, Nakum, everybody, not just prophet or messengers, everybody. And Ayatihi, uh, his signs, make, he makes his signs so that we can understand his signs. Now that in itself is telling us something. It said that Allah gives signs and he made those signs so we can understand those signs. A lot of times we lose uh, direction not because of our own understanding but because we start following others' understanding. That's why it's so important to be able to read Quran. <clears throat> Today we're going to look at some of the very important issues that bring us uh, to the point in this day and time I've uh, seen and heard a lot of people on different news media talking about the current events and what is current. One thing Allah tells us he says, in order to avoid confusion, avoid confusion, <clears throat> Allah has revealed the Quran as a clear logic. That, that helps us to avoid the confusions of today. If we don't see the Quran as a clear logic, then we, are, we can be confused. And if you do see the Quran as clear logic, then you can't be confused. You can't be tricked. You can't be maneuvered. Because the Quran is your logic, is your reasoning. It's what you follow to its logical conclusion. Then Allah says, He revealed <coughs> it to the human being to follow. <coughs> he revealed the Quran to the human being to follow. That was out of his mercy. Out of his mercy. He revealed the human being to follow. Follow the Quran. You know there's a, a part in the Quran where we say that we follow, uh, we are Muslim. And Allah uses a couple words in the Quran to help us coming to some understanding. He uses words like Dina. Dina meaning most times it's translated into religion. And also the word Milat. Milat is transferred into religion also. But you see Milat, Milat is used a lot with Ibrahim. It says, uh, Malata Ibrahim, uh, the way of Ibrahim, the, the things that Ibrahim did, that's when that used. But still, it's, it's put with religion in terms of when you start understanding the religion, the, the English of the, those terms. Deen is a little different than just religion because Deen also uh, means uh, do. Uh, Malike Yomi Deen. Uh, uh, that's the day of judgment. <laughs> deen, deen, and that threatens the, the, the day of judgment, the day of doom. You see, and the deen also, it, Allah says, he's, he's uh, this is the deen Allah has given us. Talk about Islam, deen. So the term deen is used in several ways. And it sort of comes back to one of the terms where is Dana. Dana is um, it's like uh, paying a debt. It's like a debt that has to be paid. And Dean sort of refers to the same kind of concept. Same kind of concept. So what Allah is saying in the Quran, throughout the Quran, He said He created man out of His mercy. Out of His mercy. Man didn't have anything to do with it. He created man out of His mercy. And the only payment only payment that Allah asks for man for that is to follow his religion. The only payment is to be Muslim. 
The only payment is to be Muslim. If man decides to be Muslim, he's fulfilled his debt to Allah. Because Allah created the human being to be Muslim. Now this is not just talking to the Muslim, who those who say, I'm Muslim. No, this is talking to all of humanity. All of humanity was created Muslim just like everything else in the creation is created Muslim. Everything else follows that nature in which they was created, that Muslim nature. So Allah says to man, because man comes from an intellectual position. See, Allah, when he created man, he created man as the top of the, of the intellectual chain. Allah says he created intellect. He created intellect. And insan is the highest form of that intellect. Insan is the highest form. And man has that form. Man has the highest form of intellect. So when Allah tells man he's Muslim, man doesn't, man doesn't just set, accept that like, um, oh, okay. No, man has the option, has the option to test that idea, to test the concept, whether he's Muslim. So Allah says, okay, be anything else you want to be. Be anything else you want to be. You have that power also. You don't have to be what I have dictated here. But to fulfill, my, to fulfill your debt to me, Muslim is the way to do that. And then, a lot of times, you know, we get sort of confused in terms of what a Muslim is. See, a Muslim is not just the one who takes his shahada, shahada tain. See, Allah says, who are the ones? It says, those who have faith and are doers of good deeds, they're the ones that answer that call being Muslim. That's what the Muslim is. One who believes in Allah, and is a doer of good deeds. Muslim. That's the nature of Muslim. That's the nature of submitting. Most times we find people trying to define what a Muslim is and they start talking about how many times they have to pray a day. They have to talk about how they have to wear their clothes in terms of the jalabi and things of that nature. When they're trying to define what a Muslim is. A Muslim is one who believes like Ibrahim. This is why Allah says in the Quran when he uses that Milad to Ibrahim, when he's instructing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, follow the Milad to Ibrahim. Because Ibrahim would then say, um, uh, this is the, um, uh, the way somebody told me how to do this. No, at the time of Ibrahim, they, were, they had got off course. Everybody had been put on course during Noah's time and had gotten off course during Ibrahim's time, before Ibrahim's time. So Ibrahim had to search it out again. Ibrahim had to find it again. And that's what Allah is saying. Allah is saying, use that same method. Use the same method that Ibrahim used and you will come to the same conclusion. Same method Ibrahim used, you're going to come to the same conclusion. Because Ibrahim, as the Quran says, was a friend of Allah, meaning that Ibrahim was close. Ibrahim was close. And if we follow that way, and if we don't know that way, how can we follow that way? This is why it's so important to read Quran so we can come to these understandings. Come to an understanding about what we are supposed to follow, how we are supposed to uh, live our lives. And Quran gives us that directive. You know the story. How Allah tells the story, and He also tells the story of Musa, tells the story of, of Ibrahim. How Ibrahim, through his logic, through logic, through the logic that Allah had created in him, through his intellect, his logic, through his logic, he deducted things from the possibility of being a creator. The moon, he says, could not be the creator. He went through the whole creation in saying that none of this could be the creator. The one who created this in the first place is the one I serve. Now that particular method is the same method we all should be using. That's the same method that Allah instructed Prophet Muhammad to use. The same method that he instructs us to use. 
this, nothing in this creation is Allah. You should worship that which created this creation. And you should understand that. You should understand you don't worship the universe. You're not uh, one of those people say the universe does everything. Universe does nothing except follow the instructions of Allah. You know, when we follow that simple path that Ibrahim had followed himself and Allah had certified it, Allah had certified it and he made sure that we wouldn't be misled if we follow the Quran. You know a lot of times you hear somebody say, well, you have to follow um, the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And never do they mention in that statement because sometimes they be maybe a little wrong themselves, a little off themselves, or trying to get you to look at something different. Whatever the reason, that's not important. But what is important is that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam followed the way of Ibrahim. He followed the miller of Ibrahim. He was instructed to follow that miller of Ibrahim. He never dip, differentiated from that miller. He never invented his own way. He never invented his own way. He only followed the miller of Ibrahim when it came down to the worship of Allah. Now as he was revealed different ayats in the Quran, those, Quran, those ayats was revealed because of situations that came up. And as each situation arose, ayat uh, Allah revealed an ayat from Prophet Muhammad to give to the community, give to the world, give to the future. But never did he deviate. Never did he deviate from the miller of Ibrahim. Never. And as long as we understand that, as long as we know that we follow the creator of this universe and nothing in it, we don't submit to anything in it. We only submit to the creator of it. Money is not our God. Women or men is not our God. Sex is not our God. Gambling is not our God. Smoking is not our God. Drinking is not our God. Our children are not our God. Our parents are not our God. We have only one Allah. And he is the creator of all of that. That's the only thing we submit to. And everything else, we carry out his instructions as to how we should be carrying those things out. How you should treat your wife is in Quran. And that had to come about because men were treating women so badly during the time of coming into some understanding. They were treating women so bad, women couldn't even... Uh, in fact, there's some places right now that women are not only second-class citizens, they're almost not citizens at all in some of the countries they're in, some of the situations they're in. And when Allah says clearly he's brought this court and as a liberating force for male, female, and children, everybody is liberated by this court and. This is the power that Allah has given man to be able to be liberated from his own weaknesses. And once we are liberated from our own weaknesses, then we can see the beauty in what Allah has given us in this Quran. Most times, the world would try to follow something that's attached to sexism, racism, eugenics, you know, they impose some kind of uh, divinity. You know, there's some groups who say they are divine. That God created them divine. Over and above all people. No, no, no source for that. They claim this. And they put it in their own writings. This is how racism was established. This is how this um, divinity and concepts, chosen people. Chosen people because they are born of a woman who belongs to that faith. That means they are blood, blood tied. They say it's a blood tie to divinity. And they believe this. 
and their rulers in the world. When there's no book to support that. There's no scripture to support that. But because it's to their advantage, they use that form of divinity. Allah is clear in the Quran. He says that Allah will not make anyone in leadership automatically. He has to be able to, his conduct has to be what's the God. Not his bloodline, not what he was born, but his conduct. Ibrahim asked Allah to make his offsprings imams, leaders of the world. Allah said never would he make a devious people leaders. Never. So when we look at what Allah has blessed us with and what Allah is doing in terms of guiding us, we have to use our logical, rational understanding and not get tied up in the, the emotionalism of the time. And that's not an easy task, but it's one we have to do. One we have to teach our children, one we have to teach the world. The world is gonna learn, learn from our behavior. If we are not the community to bring in a balanced thinking, then who would possibly be the community? You have some communities say they are the community chosen because of the color of their skin, or because of the country they're from, or because of their mothers or fathers. How could they be, how could they be balanced? How could it possibly be balanced if I say to you, all African Americans are the chosen people, and we are the leaders of the world? How could that be fair to a brother from Pakistan? How could it be a, a fair from a, a Caucasian from France? How could it be fair from somebody from South America or Australia? How could it be fair to them? They had no, no, no control over how they were born or who, who gave them birth. Certainly if a person could choose their birth, they would choose, everybody would choose to be rich. Everybody would choose to have, have somebody serving them. But that's not the way it is because the only thing that we should be concerned with and the only thing that Allah instructs us on is our behavior. He says because this is only a trial. This is only a trial to get us to the next level, which is far better than this. If you think this is great because you have a beautiful home or lots of money or wives and, and women have everything they want, their husband get them everything. If you think this is great, it's not even close to what the hereafter is going to be. Uh, in fact, that's the wrong term. It's the, it's the, the, the agenda going to be. Paradise going to be. Because you really don't know where it is. So there's no sense in saying here. But we do know about here. We do know there's paradise here on earth too. And some people are living in it. And Allah says, you can get this paradise. Your paradise is going to be even greater. But he doesn't exclude it. It's not, it, it's not just for the, the uh, Caucasian, not just for the Jew, not just for the black, it's not just for the white, it's not just for, it's only, only one that's excluded is shaitan. This only thing that's included is the human, human, human being who does good conduct, who has good deeds. That's the one that comes in to the gate. Now, certainly we all strive hard, but there are many things that this world puts up that causes us to sort of like lose focus. And when we lose focus, it's kind of hard to get back on track because it's a lot like a, a drug addict. A drug addict can be a good person a long time and then somehow or another become addicted to heroin. 
Maybe not something that strong. Maybe just alcohol. Or maybe just overeating. But become addicted. The struggle that the person has to get out of an addiction is tremendous. I've seen it, and I remember a time when I, had, I couldn't quit smoking. When I was a young fella, I tried hashish, reefer. But I was able to step away from that. A lot blessed me to step away. Never got strung out, but I was able to step away. But cigarettes were difficult for me. Difficult, very difficult. Now some may say, well, you don't have to stop smoking cigarettes. No, if the same thing is anything that harms your body consistently, you should not even think about doing it. How are you going to argue with somebody about some morality? You don't need to get into a moral dispute about what they're doing. If you're doing something and it harms your body consistently, and there's proof that it does that, you should not do it as a Muslim because your body belongs to Allah and you're serving Allah. So how are you going to damage what Allah has given you? Allah has given you this body. He's given you your life. And you turn around and damage it with smoke and damage it with blowing up your lungs? That's not serving Allah. And I don't care how many times a person is making select, he's still not serving Allah if he's smoking cigarettes. Now he's probably still Muslim. He got his ways and all oh that. But serving Allah means you're not doing damage to yourself. Number one. And then you don't do damage to anyone else. But first you don't do damage to yourself. Now at the time, they didn't know cigarettes was harmful. As they do now. That was in the time of ignorance. And people smoked the different things. And as I said, I smoked. But when Allah blessed me to step away from it, I stepped away from it, so far away from it. And I know, and I, this is why I'm saying to you that breaking the habit is difficult, but it's possible. It is possible if you believe. It is possible, if you believe. And this is what we should be telling the world about. We as Muslim, those who are committed to being Muslim, we should be informing the world about the possibilities that Islam gives to, gives to the world. We should be telling every, every American, every American in America, and perhaps all over the world, we should get that message, but the message we should be telling every American is that Islam is in America now. And we should be striving to uplift Islam. I don't want no matter there could be Christians, Jews, doesn't make any difference, or atheists. All we have to do is tell them, look at the history of the power of Islam. Look at that history, and if that can happen here in America, we would be blessed. Islam brought you out of the dark, dark ages. Brought them out. It lifted up the, the Arabian Peninsula. The Arabs on the Arabian Peninsula never, never had the kind of credibility that they had now because of Islam. And it can do the same thing in America. The problems that they have in America now would begin to dissipate if they were simply just allow the Muslims in America to be Muslims. Allow the Muslims in America to practice Islam without all of the, the, the hindering, without all of the cutting, cutting us off, without all of the bringing up with ideas and concepts and, and bringing out bad information in the community, telling people that this is wrong, this is not good. If they just stop with the propaganda, the good of Islam would show through and America would begin to change. They don't have to become Muslim. We said this before. They don't have to become Muslim. They don't have to convert from Judaism to Islam. They don't have to convert from being a Baptist to, to becoming a Muslim. But they will change. Because we, <coughs> as Muslim, encourage everyone to follow their book. 
And in their book is good conduct. In the, in the Bible is good conduct. In the Torah is good conduct. All of those books have good conduct in them. The problem is they are not following them. The problem is most of the liquor that's sold in America is by Christians and Jews. Even with alcoholism running rampant, they're still selling and making money. If they just followed their book and stopped that, it wouldn't be no problem with alcoholism. The hashish that comes into the country, most of it is done by Christians and Jews and Muslims. The gambling, all of those things, if the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims just forbid what is wrong and promote what is right, it will disappear. The problem is we are not following the book. And this is what we have to do. We have to follow the book and encourage those others to follow the book. If they don't want to follow the Quran, then follow the Bible. Don't read the Bible and tell me you eating pork because some old reason that you came up with or some preacher came up with. When in the Bible it says, do not eat the pork. Do not eat that without the craving foot. Do not eat pork. It's in the Bible. It's in the Torah. Now why would they do it? It's simply because somebody is telling them to do it because they make a lot of money off of it. They make a lot of money off alcoholism. You go down the store, down the street, you see stores filled up with alcohol, liquor. And this is a Christian society. It shouldn't even be in a Christian. How are you going to say this is a Christian nation and you got alcohol bars all up and down the street? From corner to corner, you go into a bar that's up and down selling liquor. Two or three doors down, there's one. In a Christian environment. <coughs> they have convinced themselves to follow wrong. They have convinced themselves to follow evil. And if we could just show them in our conduct that they're not following their book, don't try to get them to follow your book. Tell them to follow their book. And the world would change. Tell them to follow the Torah and the world would change. Tell them to follow the Bible and the world would change. Just tell them to follow their book. And every Muslim to follow the Quran. The world would change simply because there's truth in all of the books. And the power of the change is in all of those books. The power to be guided is in all of those books. And if they say that's what they believe, if they say that's what they follow, what does Allah say in the Quran? He say, if you follow your book, to those who follow Torah, to the Jews. If you follow your book, and then he says to the Christian, if you follow your book, your reward is with your Lord. Now who is their Lord? Who is the Lord? The Lord of all the worlds. The Lord of all systems of knowledge. It's Allah. So Allah is telling them, you follow your book. Don't worry about that. Just follow your book. If they follow their books, the world will change. And we, as Muslims, we should definitely be following our book. Not so much to try to get them to become Muslim. If they do, alhamdulillah. Allah makes Muslims, so we won't worry about that. But we should be following our book. We should be following the Quran. We should be following the ways of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should be following the way of Ibrahim. And we should encourage others to follow their book. And if we encourage them to follow their books, their books will not cause them to be racist. Their books will not cause them to be gangsters. Their books will not cause them to promote trouble. Those who promote in trouble are not following their books. I don't care if they call themselves Jews or not. I can stand, be, I can bring a, a Jewish person, call himself a, a Zionist, up and tell you why he has to do what he do, and I can pull an Orthodox Jew, a rabbi, come out and say he's absolutely wrong. He's wrong. That's not, that's not uh, Judaism. That's not what we, uh, that's not what the Torah says. Do you know that the, there are people all over the world condemning what the Zionists is doing in, 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 in um, Israel. 
condemning it. Why? Because they say that's, they, they say that's politics. Nationhood is not part of Judaism. But they have done that because those who want to control the world are using the religion to hide their dirty behavior. But we have to go after the innocent. We have to go after the innocent, encourage them to follow their book. Help them read their books. And you should know where, where the good is in, in the books. You should know how to read, read what's in the, in the, in the Bible. How are you going to tell a person what's good if you don't know it? Now, if you haven't studied the Bible, I'm not saying you should get into a, a full studying of the Bible and help you, but if you're going to help some people, you might have to. But you should know your book. Your book you should know. The Quran you should know from cover to cover. Not necessarily memorizing it, but you should know what it, you should know the spirit of it. You should know the spirit of it. You should know when a person is talking Quran, you can feel it, you can understand it. Because you, 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 you read the book constantly. You can tell the good. And we can encourage others to do the same. So with that, we want to take a short pause. Everybody's doing things and you, you, you won't tell them what's wrong or right because you, you, you want to stand they don't want to be seen. No, I ain't going to let them know what I am. No, because you, because you wear a, a, a kufi, jalabi, and all that, that don't mean you Muslim. Some people, you hide behind that. Because they, they, I, I was talking with the brother one day. And he said, you know why I wear the jalabi and the white and all white and everything? I said, why? He said, that keep people off me. Whoa. Now they don't, they don't bother me because they see where I am, so they don't say nothing to me. I go places. You know. See, it's, it's think it should be just the opposite. You should be attracting the people to you. You should be attracting the people to you because you have the goods. If you don't think you have the goods, then you shouldn't attract people to you. You should leave them alone, let them do what they're doing, and you go about your business. I can understand that. But if you believe you got the goods, if you believe you can feed the hungry, if you can believe you can help the lame, if you can believe you can help the blind, if you can believe all those things and you've got that power, then you should be one to attract them to you. You should have the kind of personality, you should have the kind of behavior that attracts people. You should have the kind of behavior that people want to know who you are. They like being around you. You should have that kind of behavior they want to come and sit next to you. Because that is what will draw the people, our behavior. Let's not do things to push the people away. Let's do those things to pull people to us. And they don't have to be Muslims I'm talking about. Greek Christian Jews, those are human beings, and Allah created them Muslim. And you, you, me, we have to understand that. We have to understand that every human being, regardless of what he calls himself, Allah created him Muslim. And all we have to do is address that Muslim nature in that person. And that Muslim nature want to be with another Muslim in terms of conversation and behavior. So our job is simple. Our job is easy. Our job is pleasant. We simply have to be on the best conduct 
That's all. The best conduct. Believe in Allah, doing good deeds, helping with his chance to help someone. That's our job. Our job is not to go home and shut up the door, kick up, beat up, and watch TV. No, no. You can do that. No one's going to stop you from doing that. But Allah does say clearly in the Quran that those who stay at home are not the ones who are going to be blessed. Those who go out. Now, I know there's not a war out there with somebody attacking Muslims on horseback. They ain't talking about that kind of war. It's talking about the war that I was just explaining just now. There's a, there's a war <coughs> on the streets. There's a war in the, the whole casinos and everything going on in America. There's a war in America that's trying to uphold evil. There's a war in America that's trying to uphold things that are not good for human development, for human life. When we stand up, we stand up for human life. We stand up for that excellence. That excellence we saw and see in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's the excellence we're trying to get the world to see and stand up and be. And they can do that and they don't have to say they must Muslim to do that. Because when they start living a good life, they already be Muslim. When they start living a life of doing good deeds, when they start living a life of ridding the society of racism, sexism, and all those things, and, and all these, uh, these movements, these gay movements, and all these, their things only get traction where there's error. error. Where, there's, where there's following the, the Quran, where it's following the Bible, you wouldn't even have a gay community. If you did follow the Torah, you wouldn't have a gay community. The only way you can get a gay community, you have to, they have to say, okay, look, let's overlook that. Things change for a minute, you know, we, we change. Everybody sees things differently. But it's clear that the, the story of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, if that's not clear enough for anybody on this planet Earth, then they, they're just turning their backs to the word of God. He destroyed a whole town, not one or two people. A whole town because they wanted to be with men. Men wanted to be with men. They said they got to go. The whole thing had to go. And then pile it up where you can't even see it anymore. Now how can a Christian be confused? Now certainly he may have a little problem of female looking at other females or male looking at other males. That's a problem you got to deal with. You have to overcome that temptation. And that's still not a, a, a homosexuality. That's a misconception. That's not homosexuality. When you go into something like um, uh, the Marines or Army, I'm told, and I see, they say, they talk about brotherhood, coming together as one. Now, I can't address that because I've never been in that. But I've been part of football teams. I've been part of sports from grade school all the way up to professional. And there's a brotherhood that we develop. There's a commonality we develop. There's a love between each other we develop, and it's not homosexual. Homosexual does not automatically mean because you like your brother, you love your brother, that's a homosexual acti activity. Homosexuality is a different animal altogether. And that's against Islam. It's against the Quran, it's against the Bible, it's against to, uh, the, Jew, the, the, the Torah. If they just followed their book, we wouldn't have the problems we have. And this is what we should encourage our Muslim friends, our Christian friends, and our Jewish friends. Follow your book. Please follow your book. I'll follow mine, you follow yours. And we'll get along fine. Just encourage them to follow their book. And we won't have any problems. The world will be changing overnight. So we thank Almighty Allah for blessing us for being here on this day of Juma. Robin Tina at the Junior Hassan, a Kiriti Hassan, Wakin at the Banana. Our Lord, give us the best of this world and of the hereafter and protect us from the fire. Honey, we come to some. Allah, 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 Allah,